Okay, today um, I've received um, a video which is a collage of um, uh, someone I find um, quite um, um, entertaining, actually very entertaining. Um, well, what we're going to do, um, we're going to watch uh, the video together because I've watched already parts of it um, and uh, I think it's, it could, um, it's worth commenting um, it together and um, yeah, just um, let's have a look. Grazie. Thank you very much. Mr Farage now on behalf of the FDD group. Thank you. Well, I can see that you're all very upset here this afternoon and I've no doubt that the events in the USA over the last few weeks have been a very profound shock to you. Perhaps you're right. You see, what has happened here is somebody has stood on a manifesto for election, got into office and within one week said that he will hold faith with his own electorate. It is called genuine democracy. Unlike the system we have in the European Union, where the unelected commissioners, like Morgherini here, have the sole right to propose legislation. So I'm sure that it's a great shock to you to see that a genuinely elected Democrat is doing what he was put in to do. Um, and it must be, it must be, um, I would think today in Washington. Sorry. Can't hear you, mate. I can't hear you, mate. Di questo Parlamento e delle funzioni istituzionali. This Parliament has uh, institutional functions, as does, does the Commission. Out of institutional respect to the Commission, but also Basically, as a result of, of the Commission as President, uh, we need to be polite, please. So, uh, thank you. And out of institutional respect, President, to the truth, perhaps you will understand and agree with me that within the European form of lawmaking, it is the unelected Commission that have the sole right to propose legislation. If I'm wrong in saying that, what you can throw me out of this Parliament right here, right now, this afternoon. Mr Farage. He talks about Europe like if he was... I am just asking you to be a little bit more respectful, please. Thank you. It's just you, can, you may continue. Oh, I'll be respectful, all right. And perhaps you will be too, for the right of the leader of a political party that won the European elections in the United Kingdom in 2014. <laughs> now, it seems to me that actually, with all the anti-Trump rhetoric that is coming from everywhere, actually what we're hearing is the true nature of the European project, which is genuine anti-Americanism. Trump is motivated by protecting the United States of America from Islamic terrorism, whereas what has happened in this room um, and in government... Sorry, sorry, guys. Is that the reason why he went to Saudi Arabia and uh, sold uh, 350 million uh, billions of um, weapons? Um, yeah, that's uh, to fight um, terrorists. Welcome these people into oh. your own homes. But can we please, just for a moment, look at the facts? amongst all the hyperbole and the hysteria. All that Donald Trump has done is taken seven countries that were identified by President Obama as posing a risk to the USA. Obama already had put in place extreme betting. What Trump has done is for 90 days to say, let's examine that betting and see whether it's good enough. But I want to ask you, Mr. Verhofstadt, and all the others, with your faux outrage today, where were you? when Obama in 2011 banned any Iraqi from going into the country for six months. Why do I hear no criticism in this chamber or from the Commission of Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Bahrain and others who refuse to take a single, not one, refugee or displaced person from Syria? And how can it be, how can it be that on Holocaust Day, last Friday, not a single one of you criticised the 16 countries in the world that ban Israeli Jews from even going to their country on holiday. What is this hypocrisy? So perhaps what we need to do, Mr President, and through you to the members, perhaps what we need to do 
is to be a little bit more constructive. All of us here say we're Democrats. Well, here's a chance to prove it. Let us invite President Trump to come here to this European Parliament. I'm sure as Democrats you'd all agree that what we need to do is to have an open dialogue with the newly elected most powerful man in the world. And if you throw that rejection back in my face, then you prove yourself to be the anti-democratic zealots that I always thought you were. We continue to strongly admire the United States, what they've been historically and what they are today. But it's precisely because of that that it's so painful to note these proposals, these measures that are being taken by Trump. These are an attack on the European uh, legal civilization. Let's say things as they are, Manfred. This travel ban aimed at the citizens of just a few Muslim countries has nothing to do with border management and fighting terrorism. This is a populist lie. Some people are being banned, others aren't. It basically depends on who Trump does business with. Let's say things as they are because our citizens need clear words on this. This is an attack on the right to asylum and an attack on the rule of law. This is an attack together with other things, the wall on the border with Mexico. I mean, this is an an international country that's going to damage its relations with Mexico, with Latin America. The whole world's being affected by this virus that's being sown. Airlines don't refuse to take people from these countries on your planes. Don't stop them travelling. Joe Linen's right here, as is Manfred Weber, when they say, well, if this ambassador were appointed, well then he wouldn't be welcome, because I can't welcome someone who even before they're appointed says I'm going there to destroy the European Union. Let me say to Mrs May, to the UK government, do not play the Trojan horse to destroy the European Union. Don't take on that role. It would be good for member states to call their ambas ambassadors for consultations with regard to what's going on in the United States. That would be a symbolic act and it would also be a good thing. It would be a good thing also not to see Trump invited to Europe until this issue is resolved. Let me conclude by saying, like Mrs. Mogherini, I'm in favour of cooperation. But until Trump changes his line, the door of, doors of Europe need to be closed in his face. Thank you. But we have to accept it because he is elected. No, it is not because he is elected that he can go against human values Thank and God. the values of the new United States of America. Even an elected president with a majority, and he has no majority of the popular vote in the US, have to listen to the American Constitution, has to listen to the American judiciary. And that is my start of my intervention. In fact, uh, people are saying, or some people are saying in the US, yeah, it helps security. Well, it's nonsense. You have given the, uh, the, the figures. Since 1975, all terrorists in the US came from three countries. Egypt, Saudi Arabia, and Lebanon. None of them is on the list. It are seven countries, and nobody came from that country since 1975 as a terrorist. So it's pure discrimination. And pure discrimination in a, a more broader approach, but because it's not only about this religious ban. It's about yeah, fueling populism and nationalism for the moment, what the Trump administration is doing. And that's not only by appointing Mr. Farage as his spokesman here in the plenary, but it's also by having the ID to designate uh, uh, Malloc as the ambassador, and more important, let's be aware of that, Steve Bannon, member now of the National Security Council of the United States of America, a man who is openly saying we want 
a worldwide right-wing movement to get rid of the European Union, to get done with the European Union, and there they are sitting here. It's our fifth column, exactly. the fifth column, because Mr. Farage is working exactly. with Mr. Barrett. He sees him on a regular basis to, in fact, one thing, that's to see how the European Union can be destroyed in the coming years. Not, not thinking, not thinking, dear colleagues, on one thing, it's a big risk to bid on nationalism and populism in Europe. We got that already in the past. We got already in the 20th century. People who thought that nationalism and populism was the solution for our continent. And they have created the group of atrocities we have ever seen. 20 million deaths, Mr. Farage, have nationalism caused in Europe. And there is no family in the European Union who have not a grandfather or a grandmother or a son of a, of, of a daughter who was not victim of that nationalism and of that populism. And that's the reason why we have created there the European to Union, to overcome that, as well. to make a continent of peace. And I think what I see for the moment, that is an American president, normally what does it do an American president? Take Roosevelt, for example. He wanted to be the leader of the free world. I'm now seeing an American president who exactly. wants to be the leader of the fight against the free exactly. world, against solidarity and against tolerance. And I think we have, it is an existential moment, Mr. President, for, for the European Union. We can only take one decision. We have the autocrat Putin who wants to defy Europe. We have uh, President Trump who has a populist, nationalist view and wants to disintegrate us. We have the threat of the radical Islamists uh, in the south and we have our bunch of people here who want to destroy inside the European Union. We can do one thing, that is unite us. Well now, you claim to be a good Democrat. It's a very twisted form of democracy when you say that all of those political parties that get votes with whom you don't agree are not relevant. It's a pretty obscene definition of democracy a, to decry whoa, 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 those of us whoa, whoa, whoa. that believe... When did he say this? When did he say this? Hold on, let me just get the, the other video. Okay, the guy is here. Let's have a look at what he says. That is exactly the message I brought to you today. A message of working with our countries, yes, but not for the sake of nationalism, precisely to win the battle against the nationalists or the extreme populists, to have a democratic federation of countries, of course, a federation of citizens, a union for the citizens of Europe. And this is the message I brought you today, and this is the only way to go forward if you want to achieve results. So it's not easy. There will not be a magic solution. It will require time, determination, persistence, coherence. I know that populists, populists, they manipulate feeling and anger. They can give a very simple uh, solution. Solution is no. To say no is easy. Say no to Europe is easy. Difficult, and that requires leadership, is to say yes, but to say how we can move forward. And that is why I'm asking you to bring the conditions for a true European debate with a true European democracy. And I'm making the signal for the next European elections. Because I believe in democracy. I was elected since I was 29 years of age in my parliament. Mr. Farage, don't look at me like that. Because, in fact, I really have a great admiration for the wisdom of the British people. Every time you've tried to be elected in Britain, you were rejected. That's why you came here. It shows that the British people know that it's much better to keep you away from your own system. Every time I was running for election in my country, I got elected. I was leader of opposition. I was prime minister. And to be president of the commission, I received the support of this European Parliament. But it is why, at European level, we need also a European democracy, a European democracy that is not built against our national democracies, but as a complement to them, as a coordination. And that basis for European democracy is precisely this Parliament. And that's what I'm telling you. And that I'm telling you that the Commission is ready to engage in this Parliament. And that we are going to put proposals before the next European elections so that there can have a real European debate where the political forces that are for Europe, well, 
can say why they are for Europe. And those who are against it should also say why they are against Europe. And what annoys me today, to be very open with you, and that we have to recognise, is that in many of our countries, those who are taking the lead in the European debate are the anti-Europeans. Well, that's, are the Eurosceptics, are the, the populists, the are the extreme this, nationalists. I mean, and that is why I think we have to provoke. It, it didn't take any, we have to provoke, um, if necessary, with a positive, constructive rupture, the pro-European forces, to ask them like to come and say... Completely. OK, let me go back and see if we can listen to this. Well, now, you claim to be a good Democrat. It's a very twisted form of democracy when you say that all of those political parties that, that get votes it with whom you don't agree that. are not relevant. It. Oh. It's a pretty obscene definition of democracy to decry those of us that believe in national democracy and to. European that's cooperation. That's you call us populist, extremist, xenophobic and nationalistic. Surely, mm. Mr Barroso, the point about democracy is you engage in debate. You listen to what the other person has to say, you put it to the public, and you accept the result. That is what real, genuine parliamentary democracy is about, and you seem to actually That's despise here, that man. and everything that those of us that stand for national democracy believe in. And to tell me <laughs> that you're in this position because this parliament voted for That's you, we were lie. only given the chance That's to vote for lie. one candidate. Is That's that your new model of, of European or... democracy? Right. Why does he lie so much, this man? The British Prime Minister... It's incredible. Uh, ...is taken from the floor of the House of Commons. Right. That's and, in fact, says, yeah. nearly the entire British government are elected members of the floor of that House of Commons. And that is the government of the United Kingdom. The fundamental difference between that and mm. the European Union is this College of Commissioners that you see over here, no, the, fun, the people the who have the sole right the European to propose Union legislation is not within the European system, not one of them has been voted for by anybody in Europe, <laughs> and therefore um, they cannot be removed. And that is why the European, that is why the European system isn't just undemocratic, it is anti-democratic. Oh. Colleagues, please do listen for a moment. They are removed automatically. I think we need to clarify once and they for all what this They cannot stay there for longer about. than four years the or European eight years. The European executive, executive gets its de like de le democratic legitimacy from this House. There is no national government in which ministers have such a are subjected to such strong scrutiny as the commissioners are in their hearings in this House, and there is no more transparent arrangement than the uh, than that of the council but uh, the commission of the council but uh, the council as we know Mr Farage is the institution you want to strengthen now if you think that the commission is so undemocratic uh, and the parliament is so undemocratic are you sitting here That's what happens Mr Farage Mr Farage Bitte. Michael. Sorry. Mr. Mr. President, under the rules of procedure of this Parliament, if you as the President wish to enter into a debate, that is fine. You are allowed to do so, but you first have to leave the chair. And I would suggest what you just did was enter into that debate from the chair, and that is not the way this or any other chamber should be conducted. It wasn't a debate. He was stating the facts. Sie Herr oh. Farage, ich habe nicht the man is like just so I didn't intervene in the debate, Mr. Farage. I just wish to take up your questioning of the legitimacy, the democratic legitimacy of this House and reject that. That's all I was doing. Mr. Van Rompuy, you've been in office for one year, and in that time, the whole edifice is beginning to crumble. Uh, there's chaos. Uh, the money's running out. I should thank you. You should perhaps be the pin-up boy of the Eurosceptic movement. But just look around this chamber this morning. Just look at these faces. Look at the fear. Look at the anger. Poor old Barroso here looks like he's seen a ghost. You know, they're beginning to understand that the game is up. And yet, in their desperation to preserve their dream, they want to remove any remaining traces of democracy from the system. Yeah. And it's pretty clear that none of you have learned anything. 
You know, when you yourself, Mr. Van Rompuy, say that the euro has brought us stability, I suppose I could applaud you for having a sense of mentality. You know, your fanaticism is out in the open. You talked about the fact that it was a lie to believe that the nation state could exist in a 21st century globalised world. Well, that may be true in the case of Belgium, who haven't had a government for six months, but for the rest of us, right across every member state in this union, and perhaps this is why we see the fear in the faces, increasingly people are saying, we don't want that flag, we don't want the anthem, we don't want this political class, we want the whole thing consigned to the dustbin of history. And we had the Greek tragedy earlier on this year, and now we have the situation in Ireland. Now I know that the stupidity and greed of Irish politicians has a lot to do with this. They should never, ever have joined the euro. They suffered with low interest rates, a false boom and a massive bust. But look at your response to them. What they're being told, as their government's collapsing, is that it would be inappropriate for them to have a general election. In fact, Commissioner Wren here said they had to agree their budget first before they'd be allowed to have a general election. Just who the hell do you think you people are? You are very, very dangerous people indeed. Your obsession with creating this Euro state means that you're happy to destroy democracy. You appear to be happy for millions and millions of people to be unemployed and to be poor. Untold millions must suffer so that your Euro dream can continue. What it won't work, because it's Portugal next. With their debt levels of 325% of GDP, they're the next ones on the list. And after that, I suspect it will be Spain. And the bailout for Spain would be seven times the size of Ireland. And at that moment, all of the bailout money has gone. There won't be any more. But it's even more serious than economics. Because if you mm. rob people of their identity, oh, yes. if you rob them of their democracy, yep. then all they are left with yep. is nationalism yep. and violence. I can only hope and pray that the Euro project is destroyed by the markets mm -hmm. before that really happens. Let's hope not. Let's hope not. Thank you. Two, three years down the line, if the economy of the UK and we suffer as a result, as a direct result of mm -hmm. us exiting the EU, are you prepared to apologise to this country and leave the politics altogether? Yes or not, Nigel? Well, there isn't much of a tradition here, is there? Because Alistair Campbell, who I row with today, has yet to apologise for the dodgy dossier or taking us into a war uh, that cost us much gold and blood uh, and did more harm than well, good. I and I haven't really. noticed Gordon Brown apologising for selling off nearly 400 metric tonnes of gold at below 300 yeah. bucks an ounce. And I haven't noticed well, anybody you, that supported well, us joining well, the euro saying, I'm really, really sorry <laughs> we were leading you in... The oh, and those that signed us up to the <laughs> ERM and so or squander our reserves. I see hardly anybody resigning, hardly anybody apologising. To Tony, to, if to, Brexit is a disaster, I will go and live abroad. I'll go and live somewhere else. But you know no, what, no, Tony? No, no. Whoa! You know what? Wait. What, Tony? Hold on. Wait. 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 I need to get this again. Is he joking me? He's taking, like, 400 metric tons of gold man. at below 300 bucks an ounce. And I haven't noticed Wrong. anybody that supported Wrong. us joining Wrong. the Euro saying, I'm really, you. really sorry <laughs> we were leading you in the... Oh, and those that signed us up to the ERM and mm -hmm. saw us squander our reserves. I see hardly anybody resigning, hardly anybody apologising. Only if Brexit a disaster... I will go and live abroad. I'll go and live somewhere else. But you know no, what, no, Tony? No, no. Do you know if Brexit a disaster... I will go and live abroad. I'll go and live somewhere else. And this is a nationalist boat off it the Titanic. The EU abroad. does Goodbye. not work, Tony. It's failing. It's failing. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just in shock. Completely, completely in shock. Nigel, who the hell do you think you are?